As the sun goes down over the Mojave Wasteland, the lights of the Strip still shine out all over New Vegas. The city reminds all of a world that once was, where people can let their hair down, enjoy music, enjoy the safety of the city walls with food and drink, as well as all the luxuries of the high life, with glamorous hotels and casinos. To the people of the Wasteland, the Strip is almost like a place where life continued to go on, and would be seen as a fantastic place to go and see and experience, even if it did attract some unwell and brutal factions in the process. However, the New Vegas Strip wasn't the only place spoken highly of. There was another city which had another luxury casino that was said to be a golden, magical place. A place that would enable a person to reset their life to begin again. A place untouched by the effects of the nuclear war that would appeal to anyone who heard about it. This place would be the Sierra Madre and its casino resort. During the post-war years, many travelers and prospectors would seek out the city in a hope to just see it in all its glory and help them to find fortune and begin again. However, once these wastelanders set out on their journey to find this city, many would never return and would disappear from the world completely. As the courier explores the wasteland on their journey, they would hear a woman's voice calling out to them to come and see and experience the Sierra Madre Casino. However, accepting this invite, the courier would discover that this much talked about golden city and casino was not what it was said to be and was actually a dark and terrifying place with ghost people who would seem to rise from the dead and lurk all throughout the forgotten streets. But how did this city come to be? Who was behind its founding and what was the reason for its creation? Who are the ghost people and why is this city and casino a death trap for those who venture there? Well, in this video, we look at one of the most terrifying places within the wasteland. This is the tale behind the city and casino of the Sierra Madre. The year was 2070 and war with China was getting worse by the minute. At this time, a man known as Frederick Sinclair, a wealthy businessman, was continuing to find ways to make his business successful and continue to keep profits in the positives. However, this was not working. And in fact, within this decade, Sinclair was suffering massively from crippling financial losses, all thanks to the war and the state of the world. Sinclair was extremely egotistical and boastful, however, and made sure that he kept his wealth no matter the cost. He could not live without his business businesses and wealth, and because of that he became obsessed with keeping it secure, looking to security firms to keep it safe. This would lead him to becoming absolutely obsessed with protection for years to come. To save his wealth, Sinclair invested it all into the creation of the city of Sierra Madre, as well as the resort and casino. The reason behind this creation initially was to be a safe place for guests who wanted to reserve their fortunes and begin again. This was a massive success and really appealed for all those who Sinclair advertised it to. During the whole of its construction, the city became an extremely reclusive area. All resources were provided to its residents through modern bits of technology called the unique vending machines, which would store a wide variety of items as well as commercial and non-commercial services. These machines allowed the residents to live in complete self-sufficiency, allowing them to be completely separate from the rest of the world outside of the city. For you see, these factors were put in place for another reason. Sinclair realized that nuclear war was coming and because of it wanted to create a safe haven away from the destruction of the nuclear holocaust. Sierra Madre was to be its own form of nuclear bunker to some extent, where people could continue to live their own lives and begin again under the safety of Sinclair's creation. The whole design of the city, especially the casino, was inspired by the Art Deco era, and this was shown with the architecture of both the villa and of the casino. As to be expected, Sinclair also wanted this to be a five-star place and nothing less. The kitchen staff were formed by some of the best chefs from around the world to make sure that anyone who were to visit this golden city would experience the finest qualities of life and would never want to leave this incredible place. But security was also on Sinclair's mind, simply because he had become obsessed with it. Here Sinclair made sure that he brought in the best security he could to make sure his creation and world was safe from insiders as well as outsiders. Here he installed state-of-the-art technology known as holograms, which were given to Sinclair on an extremely exclusive contract. These 
holograms would be untouchable, meaning no one could physically harm them. And if they caused any trouble on the premises, they would be laser downed and killed then and there, keeping the Ciara Madre safe. The holograms would also tend to the games within the casino and be set up with their own stores out within the villas to cut down on the staff on the payroll. With a hologram, it was far more cost effective and no one could physically harm them, meaning safety and profit was at the forefront of all of Sinclair's decisions. On top of that, Sinclair also made sure that the gates and doors of the Sierra Madre were designed to fully seal in case of emergencies, and the speakers located all over the city were shielded to prevent vandalism. If a guest were to arrive within the city, an automated front desk would activate, working out who the guests were and escorting them to their rooms. However, if anyone arrived with foreign substances on their bodies when entering the city, the guests and security system would stun them, knocking them out and separating them to make sure they were no longer contaminated and a risk to the other guests in the casino or the city. As the construction of Sinclair's pride and joy continued, it seemed like this golden city was going to be the most idolized place within America and probably the world. Guests were to be treated like royalty and be given a second chance to rebuild their lives and wealth. The city itself was extremely cost efficient with holograms doing the most of the work and security being untouchable, meaning if anyone wanted to cause trouble within the casino, they would be quickly removed in probably a horrifying manner. However, whilst this place seemed like a utopia for anyone who wanted to visit and rebuild their lives, the Sierra Madre had a much darker side to it. And that was all down to some of the decisions that Sinclair made during its creation. The most important one to note was on the actual construction of its facilities. Sinclair wanted the casino to be of vast importance, for it to stand out as a beacon for the new world, a statement piece that was to scream out security as soon as you entered the city. But there was a problem. He had an extremely tight deadline to get this done, ready for its opening gala, and his budget was not what he wanted. He needed to prioritize one over the other, and because of it, the casino became the priority. Two companies were hired for this project, Project, with the casino being given the well-performing company to make sure it was of the best quality. The villa, however, was given to a cheaper, slacking and corrupt company who cut costs everywhere they could, meaning the design of the area was completely different from that of the casinos. Residents of this area, being some of the guests as well as the workers for Sinclair, described the constructed buildings as being made out of sand, barely held together with spit and glue. The stability of the buildings within this area were extremely poor, and multiple accidents happened during its construction, causing crew members to be seriously injured in the process and causing numerous setbacks and accidents. Alongside this, because of the self-serving nature of the unique vending machines, supplying everyone with goods and services, anything brought in from the outside world was strictly prohibited and seen as contraband. Anyone bringing in meds, chems, alcohol, or even any type of outside food would be arrested or most likely kicked out of the city. Because of these strict rules and the poor treatment of workers within the area, this led to a black market being formed, where some of the workers would sell things that were banned within the city. This quickly became known to Sinclair staff, and because of it, the Sierra Madre's heads of security started conducting searches within the villa area, as well as inspections within the Puesta del Sol construction offices, where they would confiscate prohibited items. Because of this poor work ethic and morale within the villa's construction team, many more accidents would happen, taking the lives of workers or badly injuring them in the process. However, the heads of construction didn't want the rest of the employees to discover these facts. They did not want them to know that they had cut corners, lost staff, and pieced together poor buildings that were made from extremely cheap materials. Because of this, the ones at the top destroyed all medical records and made sure they were protected legally from any lawsuits they may face, making this area feel even more corrupt thanks to the bad management of funds being poured into the villa area. But the worst situation to come out of the construction was another decision made by Sinclair. However, completely unaware of it at first when purchasing his security system. As Sinclair set out to purchase his holograms for his golden city, he would venture to Big Mountain for it. Here he would go on to purchase those holograms as well as other technology. However, during the signing of the purchase contract, Sinclair would also go on to agree to signing a Faustian pact. Here the think tank would also place a mysterious cloud at the Sierra Madre, which would be used as a test on the inhabitants, treating them like guinea pigs to see what effects it would have on them 
when exposed to this cloud. Sinclair had no choice, however. If he wanted those holograms, he needed to sign this pact and accept the cloud. He was already on the brink of bankruptcy at this point and could not make any bad decisions. Signing the pact, Big Mountain would allow Sinclair to have his precious technology, but would be supplied with an experimental cloud that would one day present itself within the city itself. At first, the cloud did not appear or cause any problems. However, thanks once again to the construction issues, the cloud would finally come into place. It first made its appearance when the extremely cheap ventilation system within the villa came to a halt. The head of construction management, Mr. Yesterday, was primarily to blame for this, putting no budget into crucial pieces of equipment in the city, trying desperately to get every penny out of Sinclair in what he would claim was the heist of the century. It was he who was to blame for all of the construction problems along the way. As the ventilation system ground to a halt, the pipes started to back up throughout all of the areas, eventually spewing out this mysterious deadly red cloud. Workers within the area started choking and vomiting, almost instantly causing them to be hospitalized within the villa's clinic. But the cloud was too deadly, and because of it, a lot of these workers were killed immediately, with no one being able to save them, as they had never encountered this toxic cloud before. Sinclair became aware of the new issue within the villa construction, and knew it was because of this cloud he had acquired when getting the holograms. Sinclair immediately headed back to Big Mountain to demand that something be done about the cloud eventually asking them to provide him with a new technological suit that would protect the workers from the deadly toxin. Eventually, Big Mountain provided Sinclair with the dark light hazmat suits, which was said to protect the workers at all costs from the effects of the cloud. The suit, however, terrified the workers. It looked creepy. It was hard to communicate from within, and it felt unnerving to even put on. However, if they were to continue working safely from the cloud, they had to use it to seal up the pipes and stop the cloud or they would surely die die, but this just led to even more problems. The workers eventually found the source of the cloud and attempted to try and seal it up. However, traces of the cloud were present on the suits and would very quickly erode the metal of the suit locks, exposing them to the cloud as well as sealing them into their suits. These crewmen were able to escape in time and get to the medical clinic to seek medical attention, and luckily were able to be cut out of the suits with the many steak knives they had within the villa thanks to awful shipping mishaps. Eventually, despite all the fighting against the mysterious toxic cloud, the workers were eventually able to fix the ventilation issue, forcing the cloud to disappear for now. Despite the cloud all but going in the years leading up to the Great War, the workers continued to wear the suits in case the flimsy ventilation system returned and caused even further problems. Despite everything that had happened in its construction, Sinclair was still adamant that he could soon launch the opening gala, and finally, his casino and resort would be that true golden paradise he envisioned from the start, where people could come and begin again. It would be a safe haven away from the inevitable nuclear war, and people could relax and ultimately be safe. To make sure people were aware of this opening gala, Sinclair strengthened the broadcast frequency emission so the signal could go out all over America, advertising his golden city. However, leading up to the much-hyped opening gala, Sinclair would experience the worst betrayal anyone could experience, and the pain caused by it would lead to the eventual fall of the city and casino of the Sierra Madre. Whilst the original concept of the Sierra Madre was set up to be a safe haven for Sinclair's guests, there was actually a deeper meaning for the setup of the casino specifically. Back in 2070, Sinclair met with the extremely famous musician Dean Domino, a man who had travelled all across the United States, including the Las Vegas Strip, as well as Europe, playing with his orchestra, attracting a wide variety of audiences. Sinclair was amazed at Dean's abilities and got to know him well, eventually inviting him to play at the Sierra Madre to his guests. Dean whilst agreeing to Sinclair found himself overwhelmed with jealousy. He felt like he was living in his shadow and couldn't understand how Sinclair could remain so positive despite being on the edge of bankruptcy in the 2070s. This frustrated Dean so much that he came to despise Sinclair and everything he stood for. However, kept that to himself and led Sinclair along, making him believe that he was a true friend. During this, Sinclair started to idolise a lady named Vera Keys. This starlet had taken Hollywood by storm thanks to 
her absolute beauty and on-screen appearance. Sinclair was just obsessed with her and he could not take his eyes off her when she was on screen or in person. Sinclair worshipped the ground she was on and knew that he had to do everything to keep her safe from the nuclear war which was inevitable at this time. Because of this newfound love he had found in Vera, Sinclair decided he needed a monument for his love and a gift to her. A place where she could be protected in almost a fortress style manner. It was here where he decided to create the casino that would represent his dedication to her, keeping her safe and making sure he never let her go. The casino was built with that sole purpose in mind. He had to get it done before the war started to make it that real protective safe haven for Vera, his chosen one. The vault would be the place where she could be safest of all. And because of it, her room had an elevator installed at the back in which she could use for when that day came. Her voice was the key to getting into the casino's vault, specifically with the words begin again and let go to gain access to reach that sacred vault that would be incredibly protected so no one could harm her. Dean learned of this creation and knew that the vault contained the biggest loot he could only dream of. Luckily for Dean, Vera was an old flame of his and with his mountain jealousy he knew that if he could get Sinclair and Vera together she could help him to pull off the heist of a lifetime and take everything from within the vault. Dean eventually convinced Vera to participate in the heist and trick Sinclair into thinking she loved him fully. Dean eventually introduced Vera to Sinclair with him instantly falling head over heels for her. However, Dean knew this was just part one of the plot to steal what was in that precious vault for himself. However, not long after Sinclair and Vera got together, Vera started to get cold feet about the plan constructed by Dean. Could she really go through with this and break this man's heart and trust? However, Dean knew that she was getting hesitant and could possibly tell Sinclair everything, so immediately started blackmailing the starlet, posting evidence of a Medex and Super Stimpax addiction that she was going through. Although little did Dean know that the addiction was a result of her being terminally ill. Vera continued on with the plan, but this time Sinclair realized realized that the two had a history together. This started to concern him as he wanted to know more about the two and his suspicion levels grew day by day. Eventually Sinclair discovered evidence that the two were hiding something and that they were in fact planning to break into the casino's vault and steal from him. Mad with rage Sinclair started setting up a trap to make sure when they got into the vault they would be sealed away forever, unable to escape and eventually die in the place they were so desperate to get into. But not long after the trap was laid Vera approached Sinclair. Sinclair, confessing her betrayal to him, stating she was overwhelmed by guilt. The love of his life, the woman he set this whole place up to protect, was only there to take from him. He was distraught. Now without a true purpose of setting up the casino for Vera, Sinclair decided to set up the casino for its initial purpose. It was set up for the rest of the population, for them to begin again. Sinclair now did not love Vera and was left hollow by her betrayal. However, he could not let her die in the trap he had laid out. He could not condemn her to death as she had been honest with him about her betrayal. Here Sinclair returned to the vault and deleted the entry that was intended for her as a trap and replaced it with an apology. As Sinclair desperately tried to remove the trap he had laid down for them, he would unfortunately take to the pipeline and due to a leak in the system would be taken out by a poisonous cloud, killing him then and there in the vault he had built to protect the woman he once loved. Everything he built, he would never see again. And the woman he was going to give the casino to to protect her from the coming war had lost its true purpose. But the trap he had set up to Dean was still there for anyone attempting to take from the heart of the Sierra Madre. <laughs> The year was now 2077 and the Great War had started. The bombs started to fall, wiping out cities all across America. Whilst the city remained somewhat intact, the guests who attended the opening gala were to be killed in the process as well. As the bombs fell, the automated security started to see everyone as a threat and were slaughtered with their last calls for help being recorded by the systems. Vera, however, was safe within her hotel room. However, she was still terminally ill and could not face living in the creation of the man she had betrayed. Here she chose to take her own life, using the drugs that had been keeping her alive all that time. Writing on the wall her final words, let go. 
To this day, Vera's hologram roams the executive suites, reciting her last words to Sinclair over and over again. A reminder of what this casino was truly about. Outside within the villa, things weren't much better. While some of the workers in the hazard suits survived, the ventilation system would once again give up a few years after the war, and the cloud would fill the air, blotting out the sun. The maintenance crews tried desperately to fight it, but it was no good. The cloud had become too strong and had surrounded the city completely. The workers stuck in their hazmat suits succumbed to its effects, mutating into almost feral ghoul-like beings who would attack anyone on sight, almost as if they were savage guardians of the Sierra Madre. Centuries passed with the clouds surrounding the area killing scavengers who found the city and mutating more people turning them into what was known as the ghost people, mutated humans who could not die unless they were chopped up into bits or disintegrated. They would never sleep never rest, and would attack anyone they saw apart from holograms. The year was now 2281 and the city was uninhabited by anything other than the ghost people and the memories of the past, as well as a gullified version of Dean Domino. However, one man was to discover this famed city and be intrigued by its secrets. That man being the disgraced Brotherhood of Steelwelder, Father Elijah. Before venturing there, Elijah would work out what the cloud is and what it was capable of. After researching the cloud extensively, Elijah would see the city of Sierra Madre in person and would marvel over how the cloud had preserved the city in all its glory, as well as its technology it housed with its holograms and security system. Elijah realized he needed all of this, including the clouds which he would use to strike back against the NCR, who had destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel in the New California area. But there was also one other thing he needed. He needed the secrets that lay within the casino's vault. But for this, he could not do this alone. He needed others to help him on his quest to discover what was inside. With this, Elijah utilized the Sierra Madre's signal, sending out the voice of Vera to anyone wanting to seek fortune and wealth. Once they received the message, they would be gassed and taken to the Sierra Madre and have an explosive collar placed around their neck, for if they tried to leave, they would be killed instantly by Elijah. Eventually, Elijah, after many attempts, would find the team that would help him uncover the secrets. That included the infamous Courier. But as the team ventured through unwillingly trying to open the vault, they would realize the true secret behind the Sierra Madre. Whether you are madly in love, indecisive of who you truly are, or are obsessed with wealth and possessions, the only way of being able to begin again was to just let go. Thus ends the tale of the city and casino of the Sierra Madre. And that is the law behind the city and casino of the Sierra Madre founded by Frederick Sinclair within the Fallout New Vegas expansion Dead Money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the weak break, but I really needed it. And my god, this expansion is so buggy and hard. I needed time to complete it so I could get access to all the areas and all that stuff for footage. So I really hope it was worth it. If you did like this video, why not give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already? And why not check out some of my other playlists if you like this kind of storytelling lore video style? Also, if you really, really really like this video then why not support me on Patreon or as a YouTube member for early access to my latest videos as well as them being ad free for you guys. And speaking of supporters I'd like to thank them real quick. Big thanks to our big fish Duquesne 23, Sacrum, Rhino Head, Eddie and our new guys Christopher and Andrew, our sharks the AVP man and Connor and our four huge Megalodon Sinus, Jacob Garcia, well Such Gaming and Shadow SGT. Also big shout out to our YouTube member our wise one Jambu as well as all my amazing subscribers over on Twitch. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you guys. So thank you so much. But that is all for now. Thank you once again for watching. I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.